Oh man, hmm. did I tell you I had this dream last night where we had figured out how to copy the same design over and over and over again onto like all kinds of different surfaces? Mm -hmm. It's pretty cool. But I um, I woke up and I don't remember how we did it. Well, you know, Aaron, dreams can come true. Welcome back to Swords and Stitches. I'm Dodger. And I'm Aaron. And we're very excited because today we're going to start our series on screen printing. It's gonna be super fun. Also, we're pretty jazzed because on all of our other videos, all of our other projects, you guys in the comment section have been saying, you know, this is a little too complex or this is a little too expensive for me. And so we decided with this one, we were actually going to show you three different ways to do screen printing. Mm -hmm. So the first one is going to be kind of the quick and dirty bootleg way to do it, mm -hmm. ramping up to the final one, which is going to be the more expensive, but also more refined, I mm -hmm. guess, way to do it. So. And uh, you know, we'll be showing you the sort of trade-offs in quality and uh, durability as far as your mm -hmm. screen goes and you know, just what you can expect in terms of uh, the different methods. Because, uh, you know, you want to find the method that's like right for you and your project. Yeah, for sure. Because there's no right or wrong way to do it. There are just different results. And so in the final episode, we're going to show you what you can get out of each of these things and compare them and show them all together. And then you can choose what's best for you. So this first one is going to be the super bootleg, cheap, easy one. <laughs> Let's do it. So the first thing you want to do is get yourself an embroidery hoop. And they come in two pieces, they kind of lock together. These are for doing needlepoint, uh, but what they're meant for is holding cloth uh, taut and making your sort of screen. So we're kind of repurposing these. You can find them on Amazon for, I don't know, probably less than $5. Uh, I've seen them at Michael's. And uh, when it comes to these screens, the bigger the better, uh, because oh, yeah. you do need space to work with on your design. This probably is about the biggest design you'd want to make in this eight inch hoop. Yeah, cause like, I mean, you're gonna find hoops that are really cheap, but they're gonna be a lot smaller. And then like your design can only be like this big in order for you to really have space to work. But that'll, yeah. That'll it'll become, make sense. That'll make way more sense once we actually show you what we're gonna do. And you'll have more of a grasp of like why you can't use all of this space. <laughs> So the way that screen printing works is you have your mesh netting of choice and the mesh netting allows paint to go through onto whatever you want to design on. And so say, really simple example, you have a shirt and you really want a circle on it, yeah? So you will block off all of the areas except that circle and then once you put the paint on, the paint will only go through the circular part of the mesh. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So today, <laughs> we're going to be working with tool, which is a very fine mesh. Mesh in general is going to be around two bucks a yard. It's very cheap. So, you yeah. know, it'll be a lot of trial and error to see what works best for you. So when you're um, trying to pick out, you know, your mesh, uh, you want to look at all the tiny holes in the mesh and think of the size of each hole is like a pixel if you were, you know, it's like if you're in Photoshop or something. And the bigger the hole, the bigger the pixel. And so if the holes are very big, you're gonna end up with a very crunchy looking image where you'll see a lot of like uh, grittiness mm -hmm. to it and you won't be able to hold a lot of fine detail. Uh, this, this piece happens to have uh, pretty small holes and so you'll be able to hold finer detail. Um, but the trade off is that because the holes are much smaller, you're going to have to press a little bit harder to get the paint through it, um, which if you're making your own screens might be a little bit of a problem. There is a sweet spot for sure. There's like a type of mesh that will get you exactly what you want and it'll be trial and error. Like I said, you just got to try lots of different types of mesh and see what works best for you. But just for the record, tool, very fine. <laughs> also, in case you're wondering, it's T-U-L-L. T-U-L-L-E. Oh, T-U-L-L-E. T-U-L-L-E. Tune. Tune. Is that your favorite band? T yeah. My favorite band is Tune. Okay. Good job! Let's get to the next one. 
Okay. So now you got your tool, right? <laughs> <laughs> and you want to put it on top of the uh, embroidery hoop. Usually these have a screw that will tighten it for you. And uh, put that around the outside. This is where you want to make sure that you get your tool as tight as possible. At least like for embroidery. <laughs> um, sometimes, you know, you just like gently tug on the sides to like get it as taut as possible, screw a little bit, and then, and then tug on the sides some more. <laughs> Someday we've got to do a project with corn so that it can be like, ah, oh, corn's my favorite thing. Remember the time we did the two project with corn and tool? Yeah. <laughs> So now that we've got our mesh inside of our embroidery hoops, if we were to put paint on this right now, it would just go through all of the mesh. So next step is to put filler everywhere except our design. I don't have a design. Then let's make you one. Uh oh. What? Bleeding through into the table. <laughs> oh, that's okay. It's a work table. Oh. Bits and pieces of a cat, but not a full cat. There we go. Sweet. Here's my little cat face. What are you gonna do with the big one? I don't know. Okay, what, should, what should we do with the big one? I can make a basketball. Yeah, let's do a basketball. Why don't we make a basketball for no reason? For no reason. It's not foreshadowing. So, for my design, I think I'm going to draw a Who don't know this? This is Aaron's um, standard drawing. Yeah, this is my drawing. So now that we've got our designs done, uh, we need to fill in the areas where we don't want paint to come through. Mm -hmm. So we're actually going to use two different options today. The first one is screen filler, which is by Speedball, and they make kind of like Amateur screens. Amateur silk screen kits. For the most part, yeah. So Aaron is going to use that one. I am going to use Mod Podge, which is used for lots of different things. People mostly use it for kind of decoupage sort of projects. It's a glue, a finish, and a sealant all in one. So a lot of people really love to use it because it's simple. It's all in one. Um, some people claim that you can use Elmer's glue. We are not trying that today. But if you want to try that out, let us report know. Report back, yeah. <laughs> I hear it works great. Yeah, I hear it's, um, it's fine. So we're literally just going to, to take whichever one and paint it in all of the areas that are not the design, like we said before, and then let it dry all the way and we'll move on to the next step. Where my brush is, bro? <laughs> I, I don't know, dog. Right there. Like yeah, these are chopsticks. Brush search! Brush search! Oh, I found them. Brushy, brushy. I'm doing it screen side up so that I don't have to worry about getting paint or the filler on the table. So if you get filler on the table when you pick up your screen, it gets off. You're real sad. I feel like this is another one of those things that like... It's like wood burning? Yeah, it's like kind of oddly relaxing. But you wouldn't know that until you try it, you know? Yeah. So something that I've noticed about using the Mod Podge on a white mesh is that it's uh, painting white onto white. So the Mod Podge is like more opaque, which helps, but there are areas where I know I put Mod Podge, but I can't see it really. So it's really hard to tell where the harsh edges are. Like right now, it just looks like blobs, just like blobs everywhere. But I swear, I painted like right along these edges. So. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how you could use Mod Podge and fix that, other than using like... Oh, because it's clear, huh, when you hold it up to the light? Yeah, other than using a netting that's a different color, or like maybe mixing the Mod Podge with a little bit of pigment. Hmm. Something like that. That's a good idea. But 
Like, I mean, with yours, you can definitely see. Yeah, you see. can definitely see where I've painted here. Yeah. Um, it's the part that looks like doo-doo. Usually when you have it, you hold it up to the light, and then you can see all the little holes. I like, mean, I can, I can see the holes. I can see the holes in the mesh where, like, there's no Mod Podge there. It's just, I don't know. I don't know. I'm confused. Well, <laughs> we'll try it and see how it goes. Yeah. It'll be fine. So I've gotten mine to the stage where it's mostly filled in. You can see I didn't paint around here because I'm lazy. Um, and so what we can do with the rest of it, because there isn't a lot, any detail there, is uh, take our good old buddy tape and just tape over the areas that aren't going to be used. That is a good idea. And it's a lot faster. <laughs> and that way, you know, this stuff is like probably one of the most expensive aspects of this whole bootleg side of the project. So that way you're using less of this. That's true. You can use more Mod Podge for your decoupaging later. Woo! Make some coasters. Watch my video with Jesse Cox where I make Skyrim coasters on Swords and Stitches. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I don't need I don't need to paint the rest. Yeah, you could just use some tape. Just tape it. I don't need to paint the rest. Yeah. <laughs> In sleep he sang to me, in dreams he came, that voice which calls to me. So that was better than the, the book? What? The book is great. The book is, I think, better than the musical. Okay, so we're back from tacos. <laughs> Uh, mine is completely dry. Uh, well, you can't tell. You have to take my word for it. Yeah, uh, mine are not. Mine have like big goopy bits. Yeah. Still kind of in them, so I'm letting mine dry a bit more. We're just gonna work with Aaron's for now. Um, so the next step, while hers are drying, is you want to, I'm gonna add, tape some quarters to the frame, because when you're screening, you don't want the fabric to be touching the surface. You want it to sit just above the surface and then what you're going to do is put paint on top of the surface and then when you push it down you want the fabric to bend and touch the uh, surface you're screening onto and then pop back up because if it just sits there when you go to take it off you might disturb it and you'll end up with like a really smushy gross looking design. Makes sense. Um, so let's let's do that. Let's tape some, let's some quarters on there man. We don't want it to be bumpy. True. We're bootleg, not savages. Yeah. <laughs> so some paint. This mm -hmm. is a uh, water-based fabric paint. It's what I just happened to have. It came with that screen printing kit. Perfect. Um, we'll just do a test screen onto the paper. So what you gotta do? I'm using my uh, hotel, hotel key card. <laughs> from uh, when we went to Comic Con. Makes sense. Uh, you wanna scoop some paint out? Oh, that's probably too much paint. You could also use like your credit card if you want. And you wanna try and draw, you basically draw the paint down over your stencil. Like that, you wanna cover all the areas. Like that. And then you pick it up. Okay, so you see I missed the top. Let's try this again. Uh, kind of place it where you want. In this case, I'm just gonna eyeball it. And then you wanna push the screen down as evenly as you can across the paper. You can see I kind of I missed a spot there, spot there. And then, do you mind holding down the paper? No. And then I'll pick up the screen and go bloop. Yay! And there you go. You've got a, your own silk screen and you can make a bunch of these. Um, let's make one on the table. Yeah, do it on the table. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm kind of out of paint, but. The other thing that you don't want to do is let the paint dry in your screen. That's going to be bad. Yeah, I'm out of paint. Aww. Well, there we go. There's another one. There's a little baby urchin there. That's a little urchin. Aww. Uh, just put like a little, just like a strip right there, right. yeah. Okay, let's go. Maybe a little more than that? Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay. Wish me luck, Here we go. Kitty. Oh, that looks like a good pull. Maybe. There's no paint right there, I don't think. Oh, no. Let's see. Let's lift it. Ah! <laughs> we can squishy, do another pull. Squishy cat. <laughs> All right, let's try again. I still didn't get paint in that like one spot. Where, oh, yeah. oh man, yeah. <laughs> oh, my kitties are so messed up. I tried to make the lines so thick and I feel like it's backfired. Let's try it again. Let's try it again with the cat. Also, this one's hard because it's small. Yeah, it is small. In general, like there's, there's a, the bigger you make it, the better. Mm -hmm. So you get to a certain size and then it's too big. <laughs> Just like with all other things, yeah, it's is a sweet spot. Like, it's gotta be like the, uh, like the three bears. Oh, this one's too big. The grizzly bear, the black no. bear, the brown bear. Yeah, that one. Oh, that's too big. Yeah, that one's too big. Yeah, that one's too big. Alright, let's see. That's better! That's better, yay! Yay! Let's do another cat. Can I do a cat on the table? Yeah, do a cat on the table. Cat on the table. Cat on the table. Yeah. Yeah. Cat yeah. on the table. Cat <laughs> on the table. Cat that on the wall. That one looks pretty good. Cat on the wall. Oh, good bit. Cat on the wall. This is like stampy. I gotta get a drum on this. It's too late. Cat oh, on the wall. <laughs> turned out all right. You know, we've got a couple couple urchins here. We've yeah, got man. some cats. Yeah, urchins turned out way better than the cats. Although table cat turned out pretty dope, I have table to cat. say. Wall cat was pretty good too. Wall cat's also pretty good. Wall um, cat will live in infamy forever. So what did we learn? We learned um, keep the netting tight because otherwise you're gonna have a bad time. Yeah, if it sags, it's gonna touch the paper more than once and it's gonna kind of muck up your paint mm -hmm. and you might even get paint on the wrong side of your screen and you'll end up with all sorts of mess. Absolutely. Um, what else did we learn? Hotel room keys. Save them. They make excellent squeegees. Especially your Batman ones because yeah. they just look <laughs> all around cool. <laughs> uh, try to do one swipe if you can because that'll give you the cleanest transfer. Mm -hmm. So plan ahead for that. Oh, and speaking of planning, don't have your very first transfer be on <laughs> your important -y thing. Do it on paper first. Yeah. Try it out, make sure that it looks good. Because you can see here, even actually, I had some uh, holes in my screen where I didn't quite fill it. Mm -hmm. So you can see there's little dots of red paint, which, you know, depending on what you're going for, might be cool. It might or, not be a big deal, yeah. But just uh, make sure it's exactly what you want before you put it on the shirt you're giving your grandma. Yeah. But she'll love you anyway, because she's your grandma. Yeah, she'll love you anyway. It's fine. Um, <laughs> So I guess that's it. I guess that is it. Episode. This is the most, the cheapest way you can do it. Mm -hmm. um, not, and it worked okay. Worked all right. It was it actually pretty good. Right. Yeah. Not the most uh, high quality and like your, your screen is probably not going to last particularly long, but it'll be enough to do a shirt for your grandma. Yeah. Or shirt, maybe your whole shirt, shirt for everybody in the family. Yeah. And next time we are going to be doing a step up, not like the full on way to do it, but you know, kind of the mid zone. Yeah. Like an off the shelf kind of amateur yeah. um, silk screening kit. A more, a more legit way to do it, Yeah, for sure. So that'll be super fun. Yeah. And I think that's it. We didn't oh. use the basketball or the t-shirt. Maybe we'll have to save it for later. I guess we'll have to use it later. Hmm. Wonder what we'll use it for. We're like making an animated GIF right now. <laughs> Bye guys. <laughs>